welcome. You're listening to The Real Truth About You, and my name is Will Sinclair. And this is a show where we try to help you to become the best that you can be by discovering your true self so that you can live an abundant, a full, and a very blessed life. And that looks like if you're a dad, you'll be a better dad. If mom a better, you'll be a better mom. Whatever, Whoever you are, whatever you do, you'll be a better person all around and you'll be more at peace, more filled with joy. The struggles that you have in life will still be struggles, but they'll be a lot easier and it'll be ha- you'll have the strength to go through them and everything that you need. Today, I am actually excited because I have a guest speaker for you. It's somebody that I interviewed in another podcast episode a while back. And her name's Tammy Dovell. And Tammy leads a meditation group. She's like a, a spiritual guide, I guess you would call her. And she leads a meditation group. And I was there the other night and I, I taped her. She, she does a, a teaching. And I taped her and she was talking about so many things about the mind and how the mind tries to corrupt you from false senses, from things it's picked up in life and it, and it tries to make sense out of things and, and tells you a whole bunch of lies and a whole bunch of things that are not true. So if you have issues where your brain is constantly telling you things like, judging people or like, gee, if they weren't like that, then I wouldn't respond like this. Or if they just loved me more, then life would be better. Or, you know, I just wish I wasn't this kind of person. Or I'm just useless at this. Or, gee, I wish, I wish, I wish, and all this kind of stuff. Or if I can just have more. If your brain keeps telling you and telling you and telling you things, then you really need to listen to this podcast. Because Tammy drops gems uh, for you to pick up. And so I'm going to turn this show over to her. This is a recording. It was done uh, in front of a group of people who came to meditate. And she talks a lot about meditation and about breathing and about coming back into the moment. And you'll get so much from this. There's going to be something for everybody in this, I'm pretty sure, because she goes through quite a few different things. So I urge you over the next half hour just to listen to this entire podcast, to listen to what Tammy has to say, and I will meet you at the end. Okay, so here we go. Tammy Dovell. I know that I spend a lot of time breathing, (sighs) bringing myself back to the moment, just trying to quiet my mind, finding myself in these places where I go, oh my gosh, Tammy, you don't have to worry about this. This is not for you to deal with. You do not have to worry about this. Relax. You know, it's funny. I see. You know, I'm, whatever's happening in the moment, and then I'll see that I'm wandering off. I'm thinking it has to be different, so I'll go, oh, right. All I have to do is be right here now. The rest will take care of itself when it comes, right? And if you guys watch yourselves, I've just noticed, if you watch your life, if you watch your mind, If you check in, you'll see that you have an opinion about absolutely every single little thing. It's the truth. It's what we do. It's just there. And I've noticed mine so, so much, you know. Um, It's amazing. It's amazing how much I want to think about everything. And so what I've really been doing is exactly what I'm teaching, is exactly what I'm sharing with you guys is, oh my gosh, it's just constant. Oh my gosh, if I don't decide what this needs to look like, maybe it can look like anything. But since I decide that it has to look a certain way, I've just so completely confined it to look a certain way. And I just see it everywhere. Like an example, you guys, I hear, like what? Um, well, like, 
if I need some, you know, if I need some extra money, here's a perfect one. And uh, the bills are a little bigger this week. So my head will kick in and it will go, oh, well, if I have uh, make three more spaces for three more clients and make this that way. And then if I uh, offer one more class in Wawota, then maybe I'll have enough for this. And I see myself go, oh my gosh, Tammy, what if I just didn't think about it whatsoever? What if I just simply went in the moment right here, right now, feels like this. And if I'm worried about that, then I'll worry in this moment. But I don't have to get in my head deciding how it's going to look, how I'm going to make this happen, how many clients I'm going to need for to get to this. Or, and I just see myself so clearly. And that's what meditation does for us. And I love it. Recognizing very clearly in our lives that our minds will continually fire. That's what it's there for. And it's so good at it. It is just so good at it. And it will have an idea about every single thing. And the more that you tune into it, and the more that you see that, and the more you go, oh my gosh, here I am again, deciding what it needs to look like, not just for me, but for everyone around me. If I just take a break, move into the moment now, it could be anything. And that's the other thing I'm noticing is when I stop defining the next moment by the way I think it needs to be, it can honestly be anything. And it's so crazy. Like my life right now feels surreal. It is amazing. The things that will happen if you're not dictating your day, if you're not deciding in your head what it's going to look like, if you're not deciding what somebody else needs to do or will do or what you'll allow them to do or, you know, how much you're going to do or how much you think you're capable of doing or, well, you know what, normally by five o'clock, I feel a little bit tired. So, you know, I probably won't plan much for my evening because I share that because our dialogue, our inner dialogue is so constant. It just creates the same thing for us over and over. And What I'm suggesting and what I'm noticing in my life is when you stop that, when you see like, oh my gosh, what if I didn't give my energy to all the ideas I think it needs to look like, to the dialogue in my head? What if I just stepped back and took a breath, moved into this moment, checked into me now? instead of wandering off, maybe the possibilities in my life are endless. And that is exactly what's happening for me. It's like Tammy goes to take control or Tammy kicks her little, and then I'll go, whoa, 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 back up the bus. What if Tammy didn't? And so the other thing that I've noticed very clearly in my life and on my journey, which I want to share, because I think it's so fantastic. I think it's amazing. We think we are those thoughts, right? We just think that that's who we are. But that's not who we are at all. And as I meditate more, and as I go through my days, bringing myself back to the present moment, training my brain, as I do those things, then the more space there is between my thoughts and my awareness of my thoughts. It's amazing. So I can see that I'm having the thought. I'm not just having the thought and doing it. I can actually see that's the thought that's happening, that's creating the next picture. And anyway, it blows my mind. I can't even tell you. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's extraordinary. It's been so amazing. I, I'm having so much fun watching my, my very busy mind. And it just gets you hook, line, and sinker, you know? But then I see it and I go, oh, my gosh. What could life look like if I wasn't constantly needing to think I have to plan the next moment or how it should be or what it should look like, not just for me, but for everybody else around me and just sort of left it up in the air. Just in this moment, this is happening and it feels like this and just rolling into the next. And that right there is a wow way to live. That right there is what they call living an enlightened experience. 
And how do we do that? We have to train our brains. I know that one day I'm going to wake up and my thoughts aren't going to be controlling my reality. I know that. I just know it. I know it for all of us. But while we're here in the now, well, actually, while we're running from the now, <laughs> because what's happening is the moment, the present moment happens, and then just the way it is, and it feels just the way it's feeling, and then your brain kicks in 0 0.07 seconds after to decide how you think it should be. It always has an opinion, but it's always after what's happened, right? And so how do we, I say it's like the little Muppets in the box, you know, the Muppets that sit up in that, in that box. That's my favorite because they've always got something to say about what's going on. And that's just like your head. It's always got something to say. But when you realize that those thoughts and those comments and those ideas aren't who you are and that you are actually that presence that stillness, that intelligence that's connected to all things, which lies beneath the chaos, the thoughts, the negative, you realize, wow, oh my gosh, I am not those thoughts. They aren't who I am. And in this moment, I don't have to give my energy to that somewhat ridiculous, maybe even crazy thought. I've had many crazy thoughts. And I know I'm not the only one because we all have crazy thoughts. We are all the same. You know, we work like we have an antenna on the top of our head. Thoughts pass by. They cross your awareness, runs through you, and you have a choice. You can decide to give it your energy or you can let it go. Do you want to tune into that channel? Is it positive? Is it healthy? Or do you want to just see that it's there, that it's happening, allow it to feel like whatever it feels, and then let it go again. But no, when we decide that we're somehow responsible for it, or it's our thought, or um, we believe it, hook, line, and sinker, whatever it is, then it sticks within us, and it continues to create a pattern in our brain. So meditation, our practice here every week is simply to move into the now, to the present moment. That's it. To that part of us which is one with all things, with the divine consciousness, with your soul, with your heart, God, the God which lives in you. Anyway, so my week has been fascinating because I just see, oh my gosh, so many places, so many times that my, I am deciding. I'm thinking that I know what's best. And then I go, oh my gosh, I don't. And I, not today, not this time, not in this moment. And the more I do that, just the better it feels to be alive, genuinely. And so even, you know what, when I get up in the morning and then when you guys are planning your days, I've stopped doing that. Like I used to be like, oh yeah, okay, well, I'll have this plan, I'll have that, and I'll take a lunch break here. I don't do that anymore. It's kind of like, okay, what's my day? Thank you for my wonderful day. That's the first thing I do. Take a very deep breath into my heart and I just say thank you for whatever today is going to look like. And it's an open slate. I don't wake up in the thought anymore that, oh my gosh, I should have got up a half hour earlier. Oh, I better run. Oh, I got to be there by then. I, I don't allow myself to panic like that anymore when I wake up. And that's a training in itself. How do you wake up? Uh, do you know? You know, are you in the panic or... You know, do you just take that minute every single morning when you open your eyes and check in to your heart, be grateful for your day, recognizing that it's going to happen. It's just happening. And you get to experience it. And no matter what it looks like, if you aren't judging, if you aren't in your mind deciding it should be different, it will be just what it is. Perfect in every moment for your life, for what you need. But our head will take over and it will tell us that it should be different, that they should be different. Even as we're sitting here now, you know, it already feels quieter. It's already starting to quiet. The reflex is already starting to kick in. You're sort of starting to feel drowsy, starting to feel really relaxed. Like, Tammy, are you almost done talking? I need to close my eyes. <laughs> Which, of course, close your eyes. But, you know, it already happens. It's already happening. 
So if we can move into our next week, sort of with the intention of allowing our next moment to move from this very present one. And the only thing that's real in this very present moment is I'm here and it feels like this. That's it. Let the dialogue go. Let the story go. Let the drama go. Let the hurt go. Let the panic go. Let the anxiety, the fear. Let it all fall away and just be where you are. Everything, when we first begin, is difficult because we've already developed patterns that aren't that. And so we've already got a natural instinct and reflex to do something different. So what I suggest to you isn't, isn't easy, and I never mean to imply that it is, even though it is so simple. The mind complicates it. And when we've spent a lot of time in our mind, it's complicated. It's very easy to end up in a space that feels complicated. And so what I know to be true for myself is that even when I was fully aware, fully aware of what I was doing, but I couldn't stop myself, I was still pulling myself back to the moment. And even when, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the, it's going to silence right away. It doesn't mean that your head's going to silence right away. And it doesn't even mean that it's going to stop right away. You know, there were certain things that took a long time because there's such deep programs in you and still are for me. But what I do know is that the more that you do it, the easier it gets. So now when I'm aware of something, I can't do it anymore. So it will, it will, but I had to move through, I had to train my brain. I had to move through the times in my life where I saw myself doing it and I couldn't stop myself, but can I be there? Can I accept it? Can I just breathe into how crazy this feels inside of me? Can I just breathe into how angry I feel? Can I not be in the thought, oh, it should be different, or, um, well, if that worked, it would have it would have shifted by now, or I'm no good at this, or, well, that doesn't work for me, or any of those things, because there's a part of us that just knows. There was a part of me that just knew. And even when I would think to myself, I would have the thoughts, oh, my God, my life was honestly so much easier before I started all this. You know, like, I wish I could just go back. I wish I could go back and, and just live sound asleep. And you know what? It was okay. <laughs> and, I would, and I would sort of just kind of look up and say, oh, I can't do this anymore. I can't. But even in those moments where it was woe is me, where I, I just felt completely defeated and I could not, I didn't want to feel the uncomfortableness of me one more second. I would just let myself fall apart. You know, I just, oh, and, you know, sometimes laid out on the floor, literally just, what's the only thing that feels better right now? Breathing. And even then, that would be the only thing that would help me, would just be breathing. And even if the, the thoughts were still there and I felt horrible and I was sobbing or sometimes vomiting or sometimes raging, I was still breathing. And what I know is that led me to now it's so much easier because it's stronger, the feeling, because you, you start to feel so incredibly much. You feel so much. So it's stronger in that sense, but it's so much easier because it doesn't have a grip on you. It doesn't, there's a, there's a distance between you and what's happening. You're not just doing it and caught in it anymore. You can see to the point where you can't even do it anymore. It's like, I cannot, I, and, and trust me when I say that is happening, but it requires moving through that very uncomfortableness, that it doesn't work. Like I, I, it is giving me awareness, but I can't stop myself. That's perfect too, because that's just one of the stages, one of the steps, sorta. Yeah, it's tough, but I always say this: nothing is more difficult than staying stuck 
Because then the same things that are hurting you, the same suffering, the same things that are breaking you are just going to keep doing that. And you're just going to be, that's it. You know, at least this way you're moving, you're growing. You are moving through the things that are living within you that are stopping you from living your best life. You are being shown what lives within you. You are being shown every single time something isn't going right for you and it's created a reaction within you. You are being shown and guided by your higher self, by your best self, by your divine consciousness, by your soul, by your God, whatever you want to call it. What you're doing, it's showing you, hey, look it, if you stop blaming the other person, or if you stop telling yourself what you know, or what you don't know, or how dumb you are, or how smart you are, or how stupid they are, or how they should never, how I should never, if I had, and you get out of all that dialogue. You just get out of it. How? You'd breathe. And that's why when I'm breathing, I say to you guys, breathe deep, breathe, because it will pull you out. You cannot simultaneously give your energy to a negative thought, to a thought, and at the same time, be focused on your deep breath and your deep breath will relax your mind, your body and your soul. So it's a guarantee. Breathe deep and be there. That's it. No matter how it feels. That's all we can do. And when you do that and you aren't giving the energy to all the thoughts around it, which is a form of deflection, because whatever's happened has made you feel uncomfortable. What's the first thing we do when we feel uncomfortable? We push it away. We don't want to deal with it. So we turn the TV on. We run in some form. We tell ourselves that we got this. We tell ourselves that we're fine. We tell ourselves that we've been through this 10 times and that what the hell's the matter with me? I don't need to be upset about this. We tell ourselves that, well, if they hadn't said that, I wouldn't be feeling like this. So it's their fault. We tell ourselves that, well, if this hadn't happened to me, then I'd be fine. We live in this dialogue in our head like it should be the way we think it is. And what I'm suggesting to you is that breath will quiet that dialogue, it will separate you. From that dialogue so that you're not just doing it hook, line, and sinker programmed repetitively. All of a sudden, you'll be like, oh my gosh, look at what happened and look at how uncomfortable I feel. In this moment, I will not give my energy to it's somebody else's fault, to I got this, to you know, I'm never going to do this again. Well, I don't go to that place because, well, they're kind of like that there, you know, you stop doing that and you start just owning what's happening within you. And it's a game changer. And no matter how uncomfortable it is, bit by bit, layer by layer, you'll feel it. And then it'll come back again and you'll feel it deeper and you'll feel it deeper until one day you go, oh my gosh, I don't really even know the last time I threw a plate at my husband. (laughs) True story. My journey has been a very emotional one. Like I've explained, I, um, you know, I, I, I probably a loaf of bread sounds fantastic, but, uh, I, I, I got off on the drama of the plate smash. (laughs) <laughs> you know, it really, my life was very, I had such strong reactions. Like in this moment, I cannot stand you. And then I'd say, and if you loved me, you would not speak to me like that. And if you, and if you, and I was very, very, very good at making the other person feel guilty. At making the other person feel bad for who they are. Like, oh, geez, you know what? You're probably right. If I did love you, I should have done something different. And I played those games for a long time, but they don't work. They don't work. Ultimately, nobody out there could have loved me enough because I simply didn't love me. So no matter what they did, it would never be enough. And I remember my first relationship, him saying, like, I cannot do anything right. And he was right. He absolutely couldn't because I was broken on the inside. And as long as I blamed him, as long as I blamed my parents, as long as I blame my friends because they should have been there and they weren't or blah, blah, blah. You know the story in your head. As long as you live from that space, 
The woe is me. Well, if this never happened to me, if I wasn't dealing with this, I'd be fine. Oh, I have to watch this because of this. We live in this dialogue that creates the reality. It's just the way it works until it doesn't. So it's a really powerful lesson tonight. Really, this is such a key ingredient in the journey, in the journey to love yourself. You have to quiet the dialogue and become responsible for who you are. And when that dialogue is so loud and so uncomfortable and you feel like it's not working, breathing is not working, let yourself break. Let yourself completely fall apart. Do nothing else but feel how uncomfortable you are and fall apart. Breathe so deep you sound like a rhino. You know, really move into it. Plug into it. Because your whole life you've run from it. Your whole life you have decided it's too much and it's too scary and you don't like the way it feels, so you're not going to do it. You're not going to go there. It's so much easier to blame someone. It is so much easier to tell yourself, well, you know, no one's had to go through what I've gone through. And if they had, we all have the story in our head that nobody knows what it's like to be me. Nobody knows how hard it is to be me. Oh, I know this happened to that person and that's really sad, but nobody knows how hard it is to be me. We all have that in there. And the sooner that you nip it, the sooner that you go, isn't that interesting that that's what I tell myself all the time, that I actually believe that about myself, you'll start to create that separation that I talk about between you and your thoughts. You are not those thoughts. You have a choice. It doesn't come easy. I remember, you know, no matter what you're doing, you can, there's always that other little gremlin in there. There's always that little thought. Well, not always, but a lot of the time. So, you know, um, when you go to do something, uh, you know, say I go to teach a workshop, there's that little voice there. Um, Tammy, you should probably prepare for this. Tammy, um, if you're going to have people come together, you should know what you're doing. Tammy, you should. And it's constantly pecking at me, pecking at me, pecking at me. And then I'll be like, oh my gosh, I probably should. I should sit down right now and I should make this happen, you know, because, and, um, I believe those thoughts. And then I sit down and it's like a disaster and I go, oh, okay. What do you, what do you want? And then I go, oh yeah. Here I am again, my head screaming what, what I should do, what I think I need, what the way to do this properly is, what a good person would do. And then I go, okay, in this moment, it feels very uncomfortable. And I feel. I am not going to believe the thoughts that if I don't, sit down right now and do exactly what it says, everything in my life's going to fall apart. And what I've noticed in my own life is the truth of that is when I don't listen to it and I just trust in, in the moment, maybe I am going to sit down at one point and start, things start flowing from me and it's going to be written down. Who knows? But it's not going to be because there's a screaming thought that's terrifying me that says a a good a good workshop will has to be planned weeks in advance. What are you going to do? Have you even looked at this? You know, and that's in there to push me so that I can go, oh, my God, look at what your head does, Tammy. It's constantly trying to sabotage you. It's constantly trying to scare you. It will put you in a corner and you'll cancel the workshop if it has its way. It, it's screaming, um, you've only got so many registered, so you should just cancel it. If people wanted to be there, it'd be full by now. It, this is what it does. And what I know is the more that I go, that makes me feel really uncomfortable and I'm here. You are not who I am. I trust in me. I trust in the moment. I trust in the connection I am to something so much greater. And I will no longer choose to give my energy to all those fearful thoughts because I don't believe they are who I am. I am the light. I am the love. I am the very intelligent consciousness which lies beneath. 
And I've spent my life listening to those scary thoughts and stopping myself from doing things, but not today. You know, you, you choose what you give your energy to. You choose who you are. Even though all this is happening, it's just happening in a moment. You can choose to be those negative thoughts. You can choose to say something nasty about someone else. You can choose to believe something derogatory about yourself. Or you can breathe into your soul and let it go. Just completely let it go. And the more you let those negative thoughts go, they die. Because you're not giving them your energy. They cannot live if you don't believe them. So one by one, layer by layer, bit by bit, they don't have the punch. So now when they float across my awareness, I go, isn't that interesting? Wow. But because of my path and meditation and I'm just the teachings that I've been so blessed with, with all the support with you guys, it just, it gets easier and easier and easier because even though I, I feel it so much harder, I feel it so much stronger and you just know things, you just know things and some things that, you know, hurt. You know, you just like, like, for example, at the retreat, you know, when someone's sharing their story, I feel them as if it's me and it hurts. I feel it, but I'm there and that's all I am is there. And in that being there, in that moment, two people engaged, you literally move into a space that is so incredibly powerful you can feel it you can feel the negative releasing you can feel the story going you can you can literally feel it and while it's moving for one person it's affecting 16 other people that are that are crying that have tears pouring down their face that's a shift energetically that's an inner transformation that's what happens when you're in the moment. And you can't even say, Tammy, you're weird. Tammy, whatever, you know, this is all a bit crazy because science has proven it. When you train your brain to get out of the negative parietal lobes, to develop to more intelligent parts of your brain, then you naturally function from more intelligent parts of your brain, which is the same language as the negative thoughts quiet which is the same language as the judgment falls away. Because you realize everybody is just doing the very best they can in their own path, in their own life, just like I am. How can I judge them? Their life is happening for them perfectly, just the way it needs to, to show them who they are to grow. I can never change them, ever. So why do I spend my time so worried about them? So worried about trying to fix them? So worried about, well, if they only knew what they were doing or made different choices? I'll tell you why. Because it's easier to do that than it is to feel what's in you. So, meditation. Doing the things you love in your life. Where time just falls away. You have so much... You, and, you know, you just do it and you enjoy it. You're not thinking. You're, you're just doing what you're doing and loving it. And before you know it, the whole day is gone. And you think, wow, what a great day. You know, maybe that's yoga for you. Maybe that's kayak. Maybe that's home reno. Maybe it's walking. Maybe it's biking. Maybe it's a hammock in your book. I don't know. But doing more of the things in your life that bring this sense of here of presence, of I'm present, and doing less to rattle your cage. Okay, you've been listening to Tammy Dovell, and you can get more from Tammy Dovell at TammyDovell.com, and that's T-A-M-I-D-O-V-E-L-L.com, T A M I D O V. ELL.com, TammyDovell.com. And you can also, I'll put up a link to her website on our website, TheRealTruthAboutYou.com. Thank you so much for listening. And you can contact us at support at TheRealTruthAboutYou.com. Please 
Uh, would you mind helping me and share this information, share this podcast with other people? I thank you so much for listening. Your time is valuable, and I sure appreciate your time, and we're all in a journey together. And so anyway, I want you to have an awesome, awesome, awesome day because you absolutely rock. <laughs>